Hey guys, so this video is coming from the UK and this video just pissed me the F off. Okay, so let me light this sage because I don't want my ancestors reading through me. Let me light this sage, light the sage. So this is from the shade room. It says, young boy forced to amputate finger after fleeing from racist school bullies. Child. So it says an 11 year old boy had to have his finger amputated after he was severely injured while fleeing school bullies. According to his mom, Chantel Bailey, her son, Raheem Bailey, has experienced racial and physical abuse since he began attending Arbitillary Learning Community in Wallace, Wale. I don't know how to say that. He was desperately trying to escape his bullies by hopping a fence when his finger got caught and broke in two. So it says Rahim was attacked and beaten by a group of children while in school. He was pushed to the ground and then repeatedly kicked. Consequently, Rahim made a desperate attempt to leave the school grounds in order to escape the situation. I received a phone call from Rahim and then the school informing me of the incident. So I'm going to read her Instagram post and it says my 11 year old son Rahim Bailey has faced racial and physical abuse as well as more generic bullying about his height among other things since he started Arbitillary Learning Community in September of 2021. Although he had mentioned a few incidents of people being mean to him recently, I did not realize the extent of what he was going through until an incident this week. So on Monday, Raheem called me in tears, she says, while I was at work, saying that he's being bullied and that the teacher threatened him with detention, despite him being the one that was getting picked on. After work, I attended the school and informed them that all this needed to stop. I was then reassured that everything would be handled by Tuesday morning. Really? So Tuesday morning rolls out. So this is during break time. Rahim was attacked and beaten by a group of children while in school. He was pushed to the ground and then repeatedly kicked. Rahim made a desperate attempt to leave the school grounds in order to escape the situation. I received a phone call from Rahim and then the school informing me of the incident. The school told me that the ambulance wouldn't arrive for two hours, but advised me not to drive Rahim to a &E myself. Rahim, his baby brother, and I were taken to minor injuries unit by the school bus, despite them knowing that his injury was severe. We spent the next five hours waiting for an ambulance to transfer us to a location where he would undergo surgery in Swansea, which is 50 miles away from his home and school. She says, as time rolled on, it became more apparent that the possibility my son was going to lose his finger was a real one. The doctors then confirmed that this was likely. I had to explain this to him while he was going through, sitting there going through agony. After six hours of surgery to save it, which was ultimately unsuccessful, his finger had to be amputated. From the day of the incident until now, our artillery learning community have not reached out to me to check on his well-being. Um, I'm not surprised our fertility community did not check on your son's well-being because when your son complained about being bullied, they threatened him with detention. I would say where they do that at, but I've read other stories of yeah, that the kids being bullied and guess what? Oh no, you're, you're, you're going to get in trouble. What? So that means you condone this type of behavior. You're condoning this. My son is also 11 years old. I don't play when it comes to my son. I don't play when it comes to my niece, my nephew. I don't even play when it comes to other random little baby kids. I love the kids, okay? But I don't like no damn bullies. That's what I don't like. One day, second grade, I'm waving bye. Love you. He goes on the bus. He had no bruises, no nothing on his face. I'm over here. I'm picking him up, waiting for him to come off the bus now. And I see bruises on his face a cut a scrape i'm like um what happened to you he's over there oh um my, the kids are on the bus i'm like what are you talking about all right but i call the school ring ring um hello may i please speak to so and so okay i was like i'm trying to understand why my son left this home with no contusions no scrapes no cuts on his face but he's coming back to me with scrapes, contusions, and cuts. I'm, try I'm trying to figure this out. He said, um, the bus 
the, the kids on the bus. Oh yeah, we're gonna um we're gonna look into that. I was like, mm, yeah, okay. That next morning, I waited for all the little baby kids to get on the bus. My son and I were the last ones I got on. The bus driver put his hand out. I said, no, 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 no. I turned around. I looked at them damn kids. I said, let me tell you something. What you're going to do is keep your hands to yourself. You're not going to be screaming. You're not going to be fighting. When the bus is in motion, you're going to sit down. Because every other day, they were standing up acting crazy. You're going to sit down. Okay? I kid you not. Before I got on that bus, that bus driver, driver. he looked miserable. He looked miserable. Always sad. This was the, before the mask, clearly. You could just see in his face, like, ah, damn, he hated his job. Was it the job or was it the dang on kids? Or both. After I got on that bus, that man had a smile from ear to ear. I didn't even know he had all his teeth. I saw, uh-uh, look at you. He was waving, beep, beep, beep. When he was see, he still beep, beep, beeps me now. My son doesn't take the bus anymore. Because for some reason in New York, after third grade, oh, no, no need for the buses. But I digress. One thing I do know. When your kids are complaining about being bullied, about this and that, take action now. Do not wait. Don't wait. What are you waiting for?